Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to apologize that um, Dr. William Liu could not okay. make it to this meeting uh, due to okay. some last-minute uh, travel arrangements. So uh, he has asked me to uh, present this paper for him. Uh, my name is Stephen Lam, and I am also from the uh, Department of Orthopedics <coughs> uh, from the University of Hong Kong. Um, so the main function of facet joints in the spine is to share load, accommodate a spinal motion, and maintain spinal integrity. Oh, okay. Now, <laughs> each facet joints along the lumbar spine vary in both dimensions and orientation. Um, because of this, the facet joint kinematics also differ at each spinal level. Therefore, understanding the joint kinematics can provide better insights into the internal mechanisms associated with various spinal disorders. Um, however, going through the literature, uh, there are some limitations to measuring the kinematics of the facet joints. Um, First of all, it's very difficult to measure the instantaneous facet uh, joint positions in vivo. Um, this is due to uh, limitations in the imaging techniques. And also, uh, that we couldn't standardize the range of motion or the loading conditions um, un under uh, simulated spinal positions uh, in the patients. So the objective of this study is to develop an experimental uh, method for tracking the in, in vitro facet joint motions uh, with the use of a um, very accurate motion analysis system. For this study, we use a um, human cadaveric lumbar spine specimen um, to study the facet joint kinematics. Um, the lumbar spine specimen was loaded uh, onto an MTS uh, spine, spinal testing fixture. And this fixture is synchronized with the uh, three-dimensional motion analysis system. Um, uh, to record the spinal kinematics, uh, we use a infrared uh, markers placed on uh, landmarks on, on the spine. As you can see here, um, each, uh, uh, we use uh, three uh, optical markers to represent a um, rigid body. And each rigid body is attached to the um, vertebral segment L2 to, through to L5. And also, each, uh, we've also placed a rigid body on both the left hand and right hand facet joints uh, on the segments L3, L4, and L4, L5. Um, so, and then, a pure moment of uh, 7.5 Newton meters is applied to the spine in the flexion extension, lateral bending, and axial rotation motion um, to simulate uh, spinal motions. As you can see in the results, measuring the facet joint displacements in the, both the L3, L4, and L4, L5, uh, we could see very similar, um, um, uh, very similar values in uh, both uh, in all directions of motion. So, in summary, the um, maximum facet joint rotations under flexion extension uh, motion is up to 2.1 degrees in the L4, L3, L4 while in the L405 is uh, up to 5.5 uh, degrees. Uh, we could see an a, uh, increasing trend in the uh, facet joint rotations as we go up to the lower spinal segments. Uh, we were able to detect a very large facet joint displacement under axial rotation, and we were able to uh, prove that uh, we could as asymmetric behavior between uh, the left hand and right hand side facet joints. Now, um, for this uh, testing method, we were able to demonstrate the use uh, of an um, accurate motion analysis system uh, to measure the in vitro facet joint kinematics. Now, this system was able to uh, allow us to customize and, and test unique um, conditions. And also, we were able to measure the, uh, the facet joints uh, continuously uh, at all spinal levels. However, um, as this is the initial uh, uh, study, uh, with a larger sample size, we could uh, <coughs> later on uh, prove uh, statistical significance. And also, we would like to uh, reduce the number of markers placed on the um, facet joints, as we believe that might affect the kinematics somehow. And also, in the future, we would like to um, uh, define the uh, an anatomical planes according to the spine geometry. Uh, thank you.